Anyway. anyway, this is a short video we're doing about how we're helping a mate um, get his tiger moth looking half decent. What he's done, he's scored himself an, an old Arizona Models quarter scale tiger moth ARF. It's so old, it's still in the box, but it's so old that the covering's all fallen off and it needs a lot of work to get it going again, to get it going in the first place. Um, he's recovered it, but he's come up against this problem with the fuel tank, the scale fuel tank. Um, this is what he's got. This is this um, Arizona models quarter scale Tiger Moth, which all looks all nice when it's put together. But their fuel tank is rather lacking in detail. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no, there's none of the corrugations on the fuel tank. And probably more importantly for us, this is a photo of, the, of a real Tiger Moth. And this structural beam at the back, the fuel tank's meant to sit on it, on these brackets. But what Arizona models seem to have done is um, incorporated their fuel tank and that beam all into one. So this is what's come in the ARF kit. So it should finish, the fuel tank should finish back here and this should be a beam, a separate structural beam, but it's not. So we're not going to reinvent the wheel. The idea is to just make this look half presentable. His first idea was to look online and see if you could find something. Um, traditionally, they put you know corrugated cardboard or um, you know, corrugated um, styrene sheets and melted it and heated it to make it fit, but the corrugations aren't the right size difficult to fit um, so then he went looking online and he found this thing in the UK it's a it's a molded tank quarter scale tank in its own right it's quite good and you could make that work but it doesn't match the mounting holes for the conveying struts that are already there the lengths are all wrong and be a lot of work to make that fit he then had the idea of cutting, like cutting it out and just using the corrugations as a veneer to fit over the tank that he already had. But that would have been, because it's all moulded in and it's like a three-dimensional shape and structure, it, to cut that out would have been an enormous job and um, probably not look that good anyway. So that gave us the idea to make our own veneer to go over this with the scale corrugations on it. So the way we went about that, first job was to get this shape into Rhino where we could actually start working with it. So we used a standard old um, scanner to take that shape. So we drew the profile of where the actual wing goes versus the size of the tank. Stick the head in your scanner put a ruler in the scanner to give the whole thing dimension and scan it as a picture and what that did it brought in this thing so this is the image we ended up with from the scanner put a bit of white paper down so we could see the uh, ruler the scale on the ruler so we're in Rhino, this is Rhino 3D, which is our CAD of choice. Lots of other CAD programs, and they all basically do the same thing. So the first thing is to scale this to the full size. So there's a scale button, a 2D scale, and you can say, you can go zoom right in on the ruler and say from there to some graduation on the ruler, say there, is 260 millimeters and that now scales that picture to full size so now if we measure that on the ruler we can see that that is 
259.88, which is near enough for our purposes. So that means that this picture now, this scanned picture of this fuel tank is exactly full size. What we can then do is trace it. You can select a tool which does lines and you can just start going around like this and making an exact copy of that shape. I won't bore you with all that but um, that's basically how you do it and you end up with um, this. So we've got the picture and we have a curve which represents the outside of the tank and we also have a curve which represents the actual wing and how that fits onto the tank. So here are the, pic the actual curves which we've traced. So there's the picture trace the over the top of the picture and you end up with these lines which represent the outside of the tank and the where their wing sits on that tank so we now have we got to do it's basically four pieces to make a veneer to go over this thing there's four pieces we've got a left and a right hand side and we have a top and a bottom because we can't mold it one piece because because of molding issues that, that can't be done so we need a top and a bottom piece um, what we're going to do is 3d print the plug so to end up with something we can make a mold over to make the piece that we actually need we're going to need a plug and we're going to 3d print that this is what we to make the top and the bottom um, veneers we 3d printed a plug if you like with all the corrugations and the details and the little um, filler caps and vents and outlets and all this stuff on it and that comes out of the 3d printer um, which we then made a mold over that's where that comes from so, to quickly show how that's drawn, how you take the shape that we have and turn that into a 3D printed plug. So, back to the computer and we'll show you how we made the drawing to print that thing. What we did, we got the full size picture of a full size tank and being really anal, we counted the, um, the number of corrugations and the pitch and the depth of those corrugations and we drew a series of corrugations probably not perfect and if we researched it better we'd get a more accurate shape but this is um, where we ended up so this is how we drew the corrugations we have the, the side shapes which we traced off this so we've got the actual um, overall shape of the thing to get the corrugations, we got a photo of a real tiger moth, scaled it as reasonably as we could, given the parallax errors and photography and all that. Um, we zoomed in and squared it up, and we've got a, in our scale and quarter scale, the corrugations are about roughly a mil top to bottom, and peak to peak is roughly what three and a half, three three and a half mils. So to recreate the geometry of the corrugations, we draw a line, we offset it one mil, so that's the um, peak to trough of our corrugations. We can draw a starting point, we can draw a, a midpoint for our corrugations, we'll offset it three point um, five mils because that's our, our pitch clean that drawing up and we want to divide that midline into fours 
and then we can draw um, ellipses that fit that geometry to there to there and from there to there and back to there so if we clean that drawing up by trimming away the bits we don't want we end up with that as our um, one corrugation if you like join it up so we can take we can get rid of that now join that up and then we just array that along array is just like a, a bulk copy um, I know 50 we'll pick a number one in the Y one in the Z and we're saying that point becomes that point and accept so there's our um, line of corrugations. So now that we've got our row of corrugations, we've added just a little flat at each end to give us some trimming space. So once the thing is moulded, we're not ending on a corrugation. We've got a little bit of about six mil at each side to uh, trim off and neaten it all up. So. This is where Rhino 3D becomes 3D. So at the moment, you can see down the bottom here, we're in top view and we're looking down as a 2D XY um, 2D drawing. If we click perspective view, we now go into a 3D view. So we can take that row of um, corrugations and using this gumball thing, we can rotate it into the vertical and then we can rotate it around that way and we've got here our shape of the tank which we got off the scanner we've put it in 3d space and i've made a copy of it 178 mils away which is the width that we're going to end up making so then you can take this um, row of corrugations Can't. and snap it to a point so you can see how we're developing the geometry of this tank so we've got our side shapes it, it doesn't taper or anything it's just a, a parallel box or round box and we now want to create a skin around that with those corrugations so really quite a simple process click one click two and it has a command up here which is a, a sweep around two rails so it's a sweep two rails and it's asking us for the section to sweep so we click our corrugations and hit enter um, it's all nice neat geometry so we don't have to tidy that up we click OK and now we have a something that's looking like a fuel tank we can pretty that up oh no we'll um, select the analyze surface make it look pretty so we can see it so you can see how that like with only literally a few clicks we've now got a three-dimensional tank covered in scale corrugations now there's a few more little scale details like we did the same process on the side panels I'll go over and find the side panels so this is the same deal on the um, on the side panels it's a lot flatter so we've got our corrugations running you know, cord wise quite flat and a little protrusion if you like for the wing a standoff for the wing and a um, like a lead out give us some trimming room again so that's the thing that we're going to 3d print for the sidewalls and the same for the tank we can add some detail of things like um, um, 
filler caps and things like that. This feature across the back, just a, no, just a box extruded through and we just position that so that it intersects the corrugations. You get a little bit of detail. Um, then it's just basic 3D printing stuff. We export, we select that, export that as an STL file and we open that up in the 3D slicer. So a, a slicer program is a free software that you download and it, into it you load a drawing of a three-dimensional object. It then slices it up so that it can be made with just a um, I mean hundreds of layers of plastic, melted plastic, it makes the layers. So we bring up 3D printer, um, the, the slicer, which is Cura in this case. You load in the thing we just exported, which is this. We don't want it to print that way because it, it, it builds in layers. So we want the layer effect to actually work for us and be part of the corrugations. So you can stand that up, you can you know, play with this thing. Um, you can see that it's going to fit the bed and all that sort of stuff. And then you can set the quality. The quality is how thick each layer is, how much um, um, infill, like it creates the outside edge and then it infills it so that it makes it quite solid so you can uh, make a mold of the thing and it's not going to fall apart. So all those things are parameters you set in the slicer program. So in this case we've um, put uh, about 20% infill. So you can see how the infill is in there and it's made this honeycomb sort of pattern that infills it which gives it strength. So basically we send that to the 3D printer now. So day and a half later, this is what the 3D printer has, has given us. What we then do is treat that as a, a, like any other molding project. We um, wax it up, we put tooling gel coat, which is like a hard first layer, and then we put six layers of 200 gram cloth on it and it makes a, a mold which is a female copy of that shape so we had one that side which fitted there and then we did another one on this side so we ended up with two molds off that one piece and the sides were done separately they were their own 3d prints and they made these two female molds so the same deal then it was these are then waxed the color Gaz is making a the spirit of Pashley is his um, tiger moth it's a really pretty color scheme but the fuel tank is this blue it's this pastely blue color so into these molds we put the first we, we wax it polish it up and then we spray the paint Patsy sprays the paint which is this blue color then we put um, a coupling layer which is like a thickened layer of epoxy a 50 gram and then a 200 gram layer of cloth and that then turns out this so this is what it's all about making this finished thin veneer that's already colored has the detail on it we have our six mil trim line up the side here and that this is where Gaz takes this and goes to work on it and you stick these all around this um, center section so that piece will go on there the sides will be so there's one of the finished side pieces that'll be stuck on the side neatly trimmed and the joint neatly tidied up and then the bottom piece goes around and you end up with a, a complete corrugated fuel tank the scale corrugations that fit the Arizona model um, 
Cobain struts and the angles, like the incident angles and everything, are still all there as per their their ARF. Job done for us. Happy building, Gaz.